What's up YouTube, I'm an average dad, and this is part two of building the ultimate litter box. If you missed part one, the link is in the description. I encourage you to go back and watch it first because you know, you wouldn't eat your dessert before your vegetables, right? Put it in your mouth and just eat it. God, I hate it. I don't care whether you hate it, you say Michael. you do it. All right. Last time we built the litter box in an upstairs bedroom closet hidden away, made it so it reduced the litter tracking almost entirely. Today we're gonna add a fan that'll automatically vent to the attic controlled by an Arduino printed circuit board that'll be attached to a motion sensor, as well as some LEDs so that we know when he's in the box. Before we get to that, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of today's video. I'm just kidding, this video is not sponsored. It has like 27 views probably. But if you enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like, make all my hopes and dreams come true, all of them. If you think I look better with long hair, like the video. If you also have a cat, like the video. If you're a big Nick Cage fan, like the video. If it's Tuesday, consider subscribing. Aren't you glad I didn't say many? Anyway, let's get to it. First things first, the fan, ductwork, and Arduino will all be stored between the closet and the hallway in the dead space above where the litter box sits. So we're going to cut a hole to install all that stuff and then we'll have an access panel covered up when we're done. Next I'm going to remove this green panel so I can tie into the existing outlet behind it. So behind the access panel I need to install two boxes. One is going to be for an outlet and then one is going to be a place I'll just set the Arduino and um, other electronics inside. Go ahead and feed through the wire that will go down there to the left and tie into the existing outlet. It's worth doing, it's worth doing right, so we're going to fix this wire to the stud so that's the code. So for these outlets, we're going to want one to be on all the time, powering the Arduino board, and then one to only be on um, for the fan when the Arduino tells it to be. So you can see here the small blue box is going to be the relay that's going to tie into one of those outlets and then it's also gonna plug into the Arduino so the Arduino can control the other outlet. And I was having a really hard time folding this and compressing it so it all fit in that box. So with a little bit of movie magic, you can see that box was replaced with a two gang box instead of single. So this will be a lot easier to fit all that stuff into. Here's that relay again. So these three terminals will tie into uh, two hot and ground wires from the outlet. And then the other three colored ones will go out that bottom right hole and attach the Arduino. So now I got a cover for the box with some electrical tape over that outlet hole. And yes, I know they sell covers with planks on one side, but they were out of stock, so we're going with what we got. So now we gotta tie into this existing outlet, and there's probably a bazillion other better videos on how to do this on YouTube, so I'll just go through it quickly. We'll double check that the outlet is indeed off, uh, after the breaker was switched off, and then we'll fish the new wire from the new outlet through the back hole. Then we'll cut the jacketing, strip the wires, and tie those into the spots that the existing wires are in. And no, my hands did not magically age in this clip. This is average granddad uh, helping me out with the electrical stuff. So after all those wires are attached, we'll go ahead and coordinate it back into place. So now again, you can see that wire starts down there at the old outlet and comes up the stud and into our new box. So we'll go ahead and check and make sure this is working. So we got one outlet that works, one that doesn't, which is what we wanted. So that one that works will be powering the Arduino board, and one that doesn't, the Arduino board will be able to turn on and off for the fan. So since we're done with that outlet, we'll go ahead and put the panel back. And before replacing the ceiling piece, I cut a hole in it for the ductwork and added this transition, which will connect to a piece that will go below the fan. So since we got our hole in the litter box ceiling, we got to find a hole in the very top of the dead space that's going to go to the attic. So I'm going to use this scrap piece and rest it on this ledge here so I can go up to the attic and find where that comes out. So now we're up in the attic. Bonus points if you can see the stick coming up in this next shot. So I do have a respirator on for this. I should have put a long sleeve shirt on. Always be careful when you're working with fiberglass insulation and just in the attic in general. And right about here, is where we're going to want to drill our hole. Before I do that, I'm going to attach some of this hanger iron to the ductwork so that when I slide it through that hole, it'll sit at the right height. So now we'll go ahead and drill that hole for the ductwork. 
you're welcome for this camera angle. I know it's uh, pretty impressive. Then we'll go ahead and slide this top piece of ductwork down in, and it'll rest on those hanger iron pieces we attached earlier. And then on top, we'll put this angled transition piece and, and a backflow cover on top of that to keep hot conditioned air from going to the attic or cold attic air coming down to the house. I did weight the backflow cover with a coin to help it open up easier. And then back down by the box, we'll have this straight piece that'll go up to the fan. So this is the fan I'll be using. I got it off Amazon. The link will be down in the description. It's advertised for grow tents. Not sure what people are growing in tents but it worked great for this application. So now as easy as one, two, three, we'll go ahead and install the fan in between the ductwork. So for the Arduino, this is the Elegoo starter kit I got off Amazon. I thought that was gonna look a lot cooler, oh well. But this is the kit, it comes with our Arduino board, the fretboard, and then various LEDs, buttons, resistors, and sensors you can use. Going into this, I had never used an Arduino board or programmed in C++. So to learn, I took the Arduino Programming and Hardware Fundamentals with Hackster course on Udemy, taught by Sean Heimel. I'd recommend this course, but you can also learn a lot of this material on YouTube as well. In that course, one of the tools that Sean uses quite a bit is this website called Tinkercad, which has a section on circuits where you can simulate Arduino hardware and software. So if you want to see the circuit I built with the code I wrote for it, check the Tinkercad link in the description below. So here you can see the RGB LED is mounted above the entry to the box. And then these wires come up and go through the crack between the ceiling and the wall. And on the other side is the motion sensor, which I blocked off with some tape so it would not detect Taz until he jumps all the way down into the box. So now the whole drywall is covered up by the access panel. And inside you can see the Arduino board is sitting in that other outlet box. So here on the left are the wires coming up from the motion sensor, and then on the right, the wires from the RGB LED. They go into the board there, just how it was hooked up on Tinkercad. So that is the finished product. So now we'll test it out. I'll reach around the corner and activate the motion sensor, which will start the red light blinking. Let us know Taz has jumped down into the box. And here's what that looks like from the inside. After the timer is up for this state, the LED will change from blinking red to solid blue and the fan will turn on, which will open up the valve in the attic and vent out the smell. And then when that timer is over, the blue light will shut off and then the fan will shut off. So all that is up and working, but it doesn't matter if we can still smell glitter. Unfortunately, this isn't something I can prove to you through your screen, but I can demonstrate that there is negative pressure produced at the entrance to the litter box. And this negative pressure where air is drawn from the hallway into the litter box is important because smell will travel on air currents, however slight they may be. So if air is being drawn from the hallway into the litter box, it will be very difficult for any smells to escape the litter box. Now, technically, this means for maximum odor prevention, that the fan would be run 24 seven, but this would waste a considerable amount of electricity and conditioned air to the attic. For us, we found that only running the fan immediately after Taz uses the box has made it so we never smell anything. So how about a little before and after of the entire project? All right, last but not least, Taz in the box in action. While we're watching this, I'll go over the costs. So for the initial part of the litter box that I did in part one, a lot of that was just scraps I had around the house and in the garage. So I think I spent around 25 on materials for the egg crate and then some other miscellaneous items. For all the automation with the fan and the Arduino kit and the relay and motion sensor and everything else, it was around $100. So assuming I forgot a couple things, I'm about $150 into it at this point. All right, wanna see what the box looks like in the dark? Let's do it. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you found it inspiring or entertaining. 
do consider subscribing to the channel. It would be a huge help in me doing more crazy stuff like this and trying to recoup a little bit of the cost.